Good evening. I'm State Senator Andrew Gennardis, and it is my honor to welcome you all to the second annual statewide virtual Greek Independence Day celebration, hosted by all six Greek American New York State legislators, Senator Michael Gennaris, Senator Daphne Jordan, Senator James Skoufis, Assemblymember John Lamondes, Assemblymember Michael Tanousis, and of course, myself. I'm a proud fourth generation Greek American. My great grandparents came to the United States and planted deep roots in their community and in this country. My parents raised me to have a deep appreciation for the customs and traditions that make our culture so special to us. Greek language, Greek dance, Greek food, and of course, our Greek Orthodox faith. All of these were instilled in me from a very young age and helped shape who I am today. These values helped shape my worldview and my sense of community. I often talk about the concept of philoxenia, which, as we all know, means the love of strangers, the act of kindness to one another. I've always believed that that's what we need to help build the bonds of community. Now that my wife and I have a 14-month-old son at home, little Vangeli, we're doing our best to pass along these same values and traditions to him and to raise him as a fifth-generation Greek-American. This event is important in bringing together our community to celebrate and reflect not only on Greek independence, but on the contributions of Greek Americans to our great state. In tonight's program, you'll hear greetings from the Ambassador of Greece to the United States, Ms. Alexandra Papadopoulou, and the Consul General of Greece in New York, Mr. Konstantinos Kouteras. Our keynote speaker tonight is Endi Zemanidis, Executive Director of the Hellenic American Leadership Council. And of course, you'll hear from my five colleagues and their honorees who have contributed greatly to their communities. I'll be back a little later to introduce my honorees for this year, but right now, we'll turn things over to hear from the Greek Ambassador to the United States, Ambassador Alexandra Papadopoulou, and followed by the Consul General of Greece in New York, Konstantinos Kutras. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, I'm happy to be joining you to celebrate the 201st anniversary of the Greek Revolution, a monumental event in Greek history that set the trajectory towards making Greece the modern nation it is today. Congratulations to the Greek American legislators of New York for establishing this statewide celebration to commemorate and honor the struggles of our ancestors in creating a free and sovereign homeland. Such initiatives are a testament to the close relationship Greek Americans have with their motherland and their fellow Greeks, whether in Greece or around the world. They are also a testament to the shared values and principles that guide both Greece and the United States of America. Last year, we celebrated the bicentennial of the Greek War of Independence. This year's celebration by New York State's Greek American legislators is the second, as we established the program last year. I'm glad to see that it is becoming a new tradition, commemorating the parallel paths of Greece and the United States, leading to a great partnership and friendship that has been consistent and constant throughout the 19th century up to today. 201 years ago, our ancestors were inspired and prodded by the sparks of freedom, self-governance and democracy, values that ignited the Greek Revolution, also the American Revolution before that. These are values that both Greece and the United States share even today. They are values that permeate both the history and life in both countries. It is thus no surprise that the relationship between Greece and the United States has endured and is only becoming stronger with the two countries being great allies. Members of the Greek American community across the nation, people such as you, have also played a major role in cultivating and enriching this relationship between our two countries. Both of us are driven by the same values and ideals. We're both allies in NATO and partners in a very ever-changing and volatile world. Greece is playing as a close ally and friend of both NATO and the United States, a vital and leading role for peace and prosperity in the Eastern Mediterranean, the Black Sea and the Western Balkan regions. And we stand together in fighting all the evil forces that threaten to destabilize our world today. We stand united to help our fellow nations to face the forces of invasion and brutality. And we're sure that in this common struggle, 
will still prevail together. On Greek Independence Day, the people of the United States join the Greek people in commemorating the establishment of the modern Greek state and celebrating exactly these two centuries of enduring friendship based on shared values, shared struggles and shared vision. This is this vision which has guided us, both our countries and societies, for over 200 years. It is exactly these fundamental values that will guide us well into the future with our strong and historic relationship growing both in depth and breadth. Congratulations again for the initiative and for honoring the motherland. Χρόνια πολλά και του χρόνου. Thank you so much. Esteemed senators, dear friends and compatriots, first of all, I would like to thank the New York State Senate for celebrating the Greek Independence Day an initiative that symbolizes the close ties of our two great nations. I would also like to thank our Greek-American legislators for their contribution. The Greek Revolution was the expression of the core characteristics of Hellenism. Love for homeland, love for liberty, love for democracy. These patriotic notions were also expressed during the American Revolution, hence the US support for the Greek cause from statesmen such as Thomas Jefferson to the American citizens. These shared beliefs form the basis of the historic friendship between our nations and will continue to do so. We are very proud of the Hellenic community in the United States of America. We feel this pride every year as we watch the Greek children celebrating our Greek parade. They honor our ancestors for liberating our nation, they also honor the United States of America, this blessed country, for giving them a place to call home. Dear friends, in these troubled days, we must draw courage from the example of our ancestors. They remind us that freedom is not granted. Rather, it is earned by those brave enough to stand proud against tyranny. Thank you very much for celebrating the Greek Independence Day. Thank you so much, Ambassador and Consul General. And now we're going to hear from three of my colleagues in the State Senate, Senator Michael Janaris, Senator Daphne Jordan, and Senator James Skoufis. Χαίρετε φίλοι και φίλοι, είμαι ο Γερεσιαστής, ο Μιχάλης, ο Γιάνναρης και είναι μεγάλη μου χαρά να είμαι μαζί σας σήμερα. I'm Senator Mike Janaris, the Deputy Leader of the New York State Senate and I'm proud to be joining you for our annual celebration of Greek Independence Day. I'm also proud to be joining so many of my colleagues. As the first Greek American elected to office from New York City, I'm so proud to see that more and more talented people have joined us. Each year, we use this occasion to honor some of our fellow Greek Americans who are giving back and making New York State a great place to live, work, and thrive. I'm pleased to recognize three people who I'm pleased to call friends from Western Queens, who have never stopped believing in Astoria. Two are active in our small business community, working to help our economy recover from the pandemic and supporting relief efforts. And one is a good friend who has been a staple of our political and civic life, starting his next chapter with a variety of new endeavors. First, I'm pleased to recognize Pete Aguilatos. Pete is the owner of Milk Flour, our famous wood-fired pizza shop in the heart of Astoria on 31st Avenue. Spending summers in Kefalonia, he learned the values of the farm-to-table lifestyle and embraces it in his business ventures today. Pete studied restaurant management at the French Culinary Institute and wine at the American Sommelier Association and also served in the U.S. Navy. He is proud to be a married father of three. Our next honoree is Maria Stavropoulos, owner of Agnanti on Dittmar's Boulevard. Maria immigrated to the United States from Athens at just 17 years of age. She graduated from LaGuardia Community College and holds a bachelor's degree in business administration from York College. She worked in the insurance industry and started her first business, the Steinway Deli, at only age 24. Maria started Agnanti in 2002, and over these last 20 years, it has turned into a staple of Greek-American cuisine in Astoria. Agnanti, which means gazing and looking at something beautiful, overlooks Astoria Park and the East River. She is the proud mother of Fotini, a local attorney, 
and enjoys volunteering and traveling. And last but not least, I'm pleased to recognize our former council member, Costa Constantinidis. Costa served as a member of the New York City Council from 2014 all the way through April of last year, when he was appointed to serve as executive director of the Variety Boys and Girls Club in Astoria. In the City Council, he's most known for chairing the Committee on Environmental Protection, and he played a huge role in helping New York City recover from Hurricane Sandy while enacting nation-leading legislation to fight climate change. At Variety, he has secured millions of dollars in capital funding towards their reimagined clubhouse that will serve over 16,000 children. I am so honored to recognize these individuals for the incredible work they do in our community and for how they lift up the legacy of Greek Americans across New York. This Greek Independence Day, let's remember the spirit of those who liberated our ancestral country and carry on that spirit, fighting for freedom and a better life, like I know Pete, Maria, and Costa do every single day. Thank you. Happy Greek Independence Day. Que zito yelas. Hello, I'm Senator Daphne Jordan, and I'm here with Troy resident Michael Papadopoulos, my honoree in recognition of Greek Independence Day. Observed March 25th, Greek Independence Day celebrates the Greek Revolution of 1821 and commemorates Greece's countless contributions to our country and culture, as well as being the birthplace of democracy. Michael graduated from Lansingburg High School with honors, attended Siena College where he enlisted in the ROTC program, became an officer in the United States Army, achieved the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, and served across our nation and overseas, including Greece. Michael earned a bachelor's degree in finance and a master's degree in systems management from the Florida Institute of Technology and held numerous positions, including senior operations and training officer, professor of military science and leadership at the University of Rhode Island, chief of the NATO Advanced Command Post, and a senior U.S. military representative in Greece. He retired from the United States Army after a distinguished 25-year career, was appointed Director of Security of Siena College, and presently is Associate Vice President for Student Life and Dean of Students at Siena. In 2018, Lieutenant Colonel Papadopoulos was honored with the 2018 Siena College Administrator of the Year Award, reflecting his commitment to Siena and many accomplishments. Michael was born in Greece and immigrated to America with his family, becoming an important part of Troy's St. Basil Greek Orthodox Church, generously donating his time and talent. Michael served in the altar, participated in the youth program, worked with his father as a custodian of church facilities, and has been active in the parish council, the annual Greek festival, and chairman of the finance committee, chairman of the cemetery committee, and a member and officer of a HEPA. A proud Troy resident where he resides with his wife and two daughters, Michael Papadopoulos continues serving St. Basil Greek Orthodox Church and the greater parish community. And as a Greek legislator, in recognition of your service to your nation, your state, your community, as a Greek American, I am presenting you with a Senate proclamation in your honor and in honor of uh, Greek Independence Day. So thank you very much. Thank you, Senator Jordan, for this wonderful honor in celebration of Greek Independence Day. I'm proud to receive this recognition on behalf of the Greek ancestry reflecting the hard work, patriotic pride, and dedication that Greek Americans have made to our country and our way of life. Oh, Thank great. you. Thank you. Bravo. <laughs> Zito yelas. My thanks to Senator Gennardis for his sponsorship of this event and best wishes to everyone for a happy Greek Independence Day. Hi, this is State Senator James Skoufis and I'm really delighted to join my Greek American colleagues again for our annual Greek Independence Day celebration. 
And this year, I'm really honored to nominate Anna Yanakis, who is a constituent and small business owner. Uh, she owns and, and operates Anna's restaurant here in the 39th Senate District. Uh, she came to the country uh, many years ago and started her life here in New York State, raised a family, uh, started a business uh, that has really turned her into something of a local celebrity. Um, people from far and wide, certainly locals uh, in the city of Newburgh, but many visitors, thousands over the years, have been fed by Anna and her family uh, and, and her employees. They're most well known for their gyros and lots of other delicious Greek food. I myself am partial to their Greek lemon potatoes uh, and have enjoyed many lunches at Anna's restaurant. Uh, and so for all of her contributions to the community, uh, I'm really privileged to nominate her from our Senate district this year. And uh, it's, uh, you know, her story really touches me in that uh, my family, when they came here from Greece, also got their start in the food service industry. Uh, my papu, when he came to New York, his first job and really his only job uh, when he came to New York, he emigrated from Greece uh, as uh, an adult. He worked at the Nathan's hot dog stand in uh, Coney Island um, for literally decades. Uh, and so I'm really in awe of what Anna has been able to do with her family uh, here in the Hudson Valley and thank her for all of her contributions to our community and Senate district. Thank you so much, Senators, and congratulations to your honorees. And now I'd like to introduce to you all tonight's keynote speaker, the Executive Director of the Hellenic American Leadership Council, Mr. Andy Zemanides. Andy founded the Hellenic American Leadership Council, or HALC, nearly a decade ago, and has helped shape it to be a leading voice for the Greek American community in Washington, D.C. Andy, looking forward to hearing your remarks tonight. Thanks so much for joining us. Madam Ambassador, Mr. Council General, honored senators and assemblymen, thank you for inviting me to address you today and to celebrate Greece, Greek Independence Day. We gather today to celebrate the close of Greece's bicentennial. 1821 has long served as a reference point for Greece's independence and its freedom from over 400 years of Ottoman Turkish subjugation. But 1821 was not an end point. It was a beginning, the beginning of a revolution. When Greeks declared freedom or death, when they raised the banner of revolution, they did not just remake Greece, they remade the world. A nation and people that was already defined by many firsts, the first democracy, the first philosophers, historians, it embarked on even more firsts in 1821. The world was already in the midst of an age of revolution. We kicked off our own here in the United States in 1776. The Industrial Revolution and French Revolution changed the world as we knew it, and still, Greece's revolution stood out. This was Europe's first successful national liberation movement. Today, American statesmen and students of international relations look to the Congress of Vienna. They read and write about balance of power politics and the famous empires that maneuvered within this system. The British and French, the Russians, the Austro-Hungarians and Ottomans, the emerging Germany, and assume that it all came apart in World War I. But it was this ancient and stubborn little Greek nation that started pulling the threads on this system. The British, French, and Russians are celebrated for a decisive victory over the Ottoman fleet in the Battle of Navarino that secured Greece's independence. But that victory came in 1828. In 1821, they opposed the Greek Revolution. The core ethos of the Greek Revolution, that a nation, that a people could rule themselves, contained the seeds for the end of the age of empire. It took another century for the, these empires to disappear, but the success of the Greeks emboldened Italians, Spaniards, Poles, Bulgarians, Serbians, and many, many others. The age of nation states may have well kicked off in 1821. This is something we should all keep in mind as Ukrainians valiantly fight to protect their sovereignty and tell Vladimir Putin we can rule ourselves. We will not be part of a new empire. Another first, one that we should also especially remember today, was that the Greek Revolution resulted in modern diplomacy's first humanitarian intervention. Europe's monarchs, British and American leaders, were content with leaving Greece to their own fate against the Ottomans. Despite some early victories, what captured the attention and imagination of Europeans and Americans was the Greeks' refusal to accept defeat. Despite horrific setbacks, 
despite Ottoman tactics that shocked even the 19th century conscious and would certainly be classified as war crimes today, the Greeks stuck to their freedom or death mantra. And they not only fought, but they simultaneously tried to build the first modern democracy in the region. The imperfections in the Greek war effort were matched by those in the Greek attempts at self-governance. Civil war, corruption, the use of brutality to counter Ottoman brutality left even many Philhellenes disenchanted with the cause that they had rallied to. Still, the fighting spirit of the Greeks and their commitment to bringing democracy back to its birthplace captured the attention of the world and made it remember the ancient Spartans and the ancient Athenians that they admired so much. And that is why, despite the best efforts, for example, of President Monroe and American merchants, American society rallied to the Greek cause. Not only did humanitarian relief flow across the Atlantic towards Greece, but so did military aid and American fighters. There were many other firsts, including the establishment of the first national church within the Orthodox world. As the Greek Orthodox Church of Greece was established as independent from the ecumenical patriarchate in Constantinople. But it is to the American relationship with Greece that I wish to turn. This bicentennial might not mark the beginning of the Greek state, but it does mark the beginning of America's relations with Greece. The influence of ancient Greek philosophy and literature on our founding fathers is well known, but that these two young states would start traveling the road towards democracy together is something we don't celebrate or even discuss enough. The correspondence between Thomas Jefferson and Adamantios Korais one of modern Greece's first thought and education leaders is one small example. The contributions of Americans like George Jarvis or Samuel, Samuel Gridley Howe, who became Greek revolutionary war heroes, is another. But the Greek revolution helped change the nascent democracy in America for the better as well. American Philhellenes who rallied to the Greek cause quickly realized that their country could not only advocate for democratic reforms in Greece and across the Atlantic, it had to change itself too. There had to be democracy, better democracy in America. As Americans reacted to Ottoman enslavements of Greece, not only the nation as a whole, but the Ottoman Empire filling slave markets in the Levant with Greeks, the abolition movement within the United States gained new momentum. Indeed, Abolitionist Franklin Benjamin Sanborn credited the Greek Revolution with the effect it had on accelerating ambition in the U.S. In her book, The Greek Fire, Maureen Santelli observed that Sanborn concluded the eventual abolition of slavery in the United States had begun in Greece and culminated in our American Civil War. Santelli makes another critical observation of the American Philhellenic movement especially how it was adopted by American women whose involvement in this movement was transformed into a more powerful movement for women's rights in America. And thus, as Santelli concludes, while American Philhellenism started as a way to provide philanthropic relief abroad, ironically, in the end, it transformed American society. 200 years into this Greco-American relationship, we are still pursuing a more perfect union here in the U.S. and a stronger democracy in Greece. But as demonstrated during World War I, World War II, and today in solidarity over Ukraine, Greece and the U.S. have consistently stood together on the right side of history. And they will continue to stand on the right side of history together. Here is to another 200 years of revolution that will bring us closer to that ever more perfect Thank you so much, Andy, for those great and inspiring words. Now I'm going to turn the program over to my two Assembly colleagues, Assemblymember John Lamandis and Assemblymember Michael Tanousis. Good evening, fellow Greeks. As we commemorate our Greek Independence Day, I find myself reflecting on the many contributions our people have made for our country and throughout the world. 
Our Orthodox community spirit of service and sacrifice is exemplified by so many in so many ways. However, this year, it is my great honor to take this opportunity to posthumously recognize my friend, Chris Meskos, for his commitment to our people and service to our church, St. Sophia's, and local community in Syracuse, New York. He served as our parish council president and was a friend to all, tireless worker for our causes, and great leader and example for all to emulate. Chris, we love, miss, and will never forget you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Assemblyman Michael Tenusis, and I'm honored to join you here today in celebration of the 201st anniversary of Greek independence. The Greeks have contributed so much to our society, including in the fields of law, politics, philosophy, the sciences, and the arts. They have shaped both our modern history and our modern life. While having emigrated from Greece to the United States, Greeks have contributed so much to our community. Today, I honor three individuals that have worked tirelessly for the betterment of our community. The first is Father Eugene Pappas. Father Eugene is an educator, missionary, and social activist. He serves as pastor of the Three Hierarchs Church in Brooklyn and as president of the Greek Orthodox Clergy Association. He also serves as chaplain of the New York Fraternal Order of Police and as president of the New York Archdiocese Metropolitan Clergy Synthesmos. Father Eugene has contributed so much to our community and continues to inspire others to live a selfless life and to make contributions of their own. I also want to honor Kay and George Malafis. Kay and George have contributed so much to our community, including, including raising funds for various charities. They are the prime example of living the Hellene ideals in the melting pot of the world, which is New York City. Today, we honor them for those contributions. These three individuals symbolize the true meaning of Hellenism. So it is only proper that we honor them today on Greek Independence Day. Zito Ielas. Thank you so much, assembly members, and congratulations to your honorees as well. And now it's my turn of the program to introduce to you my two community honorees. First up, I'd like to introduce to you all Mr. Jimmy Kokotas, the National Supreme President of the Order of Ahepa and a resident of Brooklyn who's known to everyone for his deep and involved service in the Three Hierarchs Church community. I'd like to begin by thanking Andrew Gennardis and all of our Greek American elected officials at all levels of government. Uh, thank you for your representation. We are proud every time we see your names and see your faces on TV, uh, and we are fortunate to have you representing us. As president of the Order of Ahepa, the largest and oldest Greek American organization, grassroots organization, a volunteer organization, as we get ready to celebrate our 100 years of, of service to our communities, to our churches, to people everywhere, advocating on behalf of Greece, of Cyprus, and the Patriarchate, trying to preserve and promote the values of philanthropy, education, civic responsibility, family and individual excellence, and keeping that flame lit for future generations to live, feel, and know what it is like to be Greek and to be Greek American in this country. What a beautiful thing it is. One of the things that makes us different, I truly believe, is our love of God, of country, obviously, uh, and a family, uh, and the passion that we have as Greeks for those things, combined with always the quest for freedom, uh, wanting to be free and to be able to practice our faith, raise our children in a better environment, speak our language, have our little quirks uh, as Greeks that we do, our little rituals, uh, roasting our lambs and whatever it may be. Um, I think that passion for those things is, what, is really what makes us different. Uh, if you think of where we come from, our lineage, our roots, uh, the heroes, the heroes of almost 400 years uh, under Ottoman rule that kept those beautiful things alive, probably was eight or 10 generations uh, in those almost 400 years. Uh, by all different rationale, you would think that the language and the culture and, and, and Greece should have disappeared. Uh, were it not for that passion and that 
fire that burned in those people's hearts and souls that was passed along from generation to generation. That's what, that's what helped them to persevere and to survive. And again in 1940, uh, when they were faced with uh, very difficult odds, when greater and stronger countries were waving white flags, Greece did not. And again, that courage, that perseverance, that love of God, of freedom, uh, and, the, and, and the future of their families uh, helped them change the world and change the world that we live in today by, re, by repaving and redirecting the war. What could we do to honor those heroes uh, and our, our ancestors, our grandparents, our parents? The greatest honor I think that we could do to them uh, is to make sure that our children and our grandchildren grow up with that same passion for faith, for freedom, for family, for life, and for helping each other uh, to persevere, to be prepared for difficult times and to always enjoy the good times that they have at hand. Zito Elada and God bless America. Thank you. Congratulations again, Jimmy. Thank you so much for all you do in Brooklyn, New York, and of course the entire country. And now I'd like to introduce to you all our second honoree, the Executive Director of St. Basil Academy, a home for children from at-risk families in Garrison, New York, Father Costa Sataris. Father Costa has been affiliated with St. Basil's for as long as I've known about St. Basil Academy, and he has helped lead that institution for decades, letting it be a place of refuge for children who come from families where they are at risk and provide a loving, caring, and nurturing environment for them and raising them in the Orthodox faith. I can think of no one more worthy of this honor than Father Gusta, who works tirelessly to provide for these children day in and day out. Father Gusta? I am both humbled and honored to receive this award from Senator Andrew Gennardis and the fellow, uh, his fellow Greek American elected officials for this great state of New York. Uh, our, our Hellenic heritage and Orthodox faith have been truly foundational for me in my work in ministry as a, as a Greek Orthodox priest for these past 50 years. Here at St. Basil Academy, we serve children in need. They're from broken homes, they're orphaned, they have familial situations that unfortunately they cannot, that, that cannot take care of the children. They come to us and we raise them. They graduate, they go through high school, many times college, and then live on their own. Uh, th these are basic tenets of our faith and our heritage. Uh, the, the, the Hellenic foundation that we have here at St. Basil Academy really stresses family, stresses uh, need to serve others, humankind, uh, be good stewards and citizens of, of this land and country of ours. We, we are grateful to you. I am humbled, as I said, and grateful for this honor. God bless you all and keep you safe and may, may our Lord grant you many, many years in his service and service for our fellow man in this great state and land of ours. United States of America. God bless you all. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father Costa. Really, thank you for everything you do for the children of St. Basil's. As we close out tonight's program, I want to thank my colleagues, our distinguished guests, and of course, our honorees for joining us in celebration of Greek Independence Day. I think about the words of the Greek national anthem, the Hymn to Liberty by Dionysios Solomos. I shall always recognize you by the dreadful sword you hold, as the earth with searching vision you survey with spirit bold. From the Greeks of old who's dying, brought to life and spirit free, now with ancient valor rising, let us hail you, O liberty. Every time I hear that anthem, I swell with pride at the poem's conclusion, a resounding ode to the price and cost of a people's freedom. How fitting to reflect on these words as we see the people of Ukraine fight for the survival of their country and their history and paying for their liberty with their lives. Thanks to everyone for joining us this evening. Zito Eleftheria, Zito Ikosipemti Martiu, Zito Yelas. Thank you, everyone.